everybody, it's Alex and Terry, and we are so excited to be bringing you our day two video of Kinderdyke, which includes our windmill tour and our cheese making tour. So uh, we, if you haven't seen our previous video, which was our day one video of Amsterdam, please go ahead and see that. It will probably be somewhere up here in our cards. But uh, this is basically we're going to pick up of when we woke up on day two and what we did for that day. So obviously when we woke up, it was pretty early. Our first tour, yeah, Viking Daily, our first tour was at 8.45 in the morning. So we went to the restaurant for breakfast. Do you want to talk about breakfast? Yeah, uh, they served us food. It was tasty. <laughs> uh, I had the Eggs Benedict and the chocolate chip pancakes. Every day. Every day. I had the exact same thing. For the and entire cruise. our waiter was so good that, like, halfway through the cruise he just started bringing me my food i didn't even have to order it so and his milk so like he wanted like low fat milk and they at first put him in these two this like one little glass and then by the second or third day they're in these humongous glasses and he would bring two at a time mm -hmm. yeah so seriously. he just got used to it which was pretty cool i on the other hand explored a little bit for breakfast it's I, not broke <laughs> I did um, the omelet station, which was you can kind of make your own omelet, and she was there every single day. I did the salmon eggs benedict, which I did not like. Oof, yeah, no. The banana pancakes were to die for, and I didn't do that until t towards the end of the cruise, which I should have done them earlier. And then they also had a buffet with like different things every day, different cheeses every day. I tried like all these different cheeses every day, so. It was awesome, uh, and so half buffet, half waiting, waiter, and it was really great. So after our breakfast, we got our audio box, is that what they were called? Yes. It's uh, these wireless devices that sync up to your tour guide, so that way you can listen into one ear and still have, you know, audio going around over here. Uh, not the best devices. One of our uh, members on our tour actually went through, like, three of the devices. Mm -hmm. They never synced up, and he just had to give up. Uh, that was pretty hilarious <laughs> to me because I knew the dude. Um, but as far as the tour, it was great. We, we learned a lot. The tour guide was very informational. We got to actually see a museum windmill that they have. They turned it on so it could rotate and show us how it worked. We got to meet the what is called the miller, the mm -hmm. individual who wears the clogs. So that's something I did learn. I do want to talk to you. Uh, Holland or the Netherlands, depending on which one you want to call it, is notorious for the people with the clogs, the wooden shoes. Never knew why. Well, it turns out Holland and the Netherlands is below sea level. They're built around levees. And the windmills traditionally were used to take water out of the Netherlands so that way it wouldn't flood. And the millers had to wear the wooden shoes so they could walk on the mud. That's now since been replaced by a gigantic electric-driven... Um, screws which you'll see in the video that she has so mm -hmm. without further ado watch the video <laughs> <laughs> that's so dumb <laughs> Now we're back. Oh my 
yeah. Not yet? Not no, yet. no, no, no. Okay, now we're back. Sure, now we're back. Um, so you got to see our video. Terry, I love that he remembers all of the facts because I, I took pictures and I did video and I was obviously listening, but he just remembers all of these little details. Um, so we, like he said, we got to see the, the, the electric screws. Uh, that was really cool. And our guide was really good, but we got to go into the windmill. It was the only one that was actually had the windmill moving. Yes, because it's actually by law that they have to operate those windmills for a minimum 60,000 hours a year. But they generally don't have to anymore because of the electric screws. That's the one that keeps the country from flooding. However, Viking does have a, a, a deal there. So they do out operate that one windmill whenever they bring a tour in. And I do want to point out something. When you watch the video, she did a shot of you see the windmill panes through a window. That's actually the front door of the windmill. And our tour guide told us this great little story yeah. of a child who ran through that door. And a mother ran out there, jerked him, grabbed him back. And she got hit by that pain, the windmill pain, and died instantly. So, yes, as you're watching that, you really do think that might kill you if it hits you, and it will. Yeah, and it wasn't Fun someone time. on the tour. It no, no, like, it wasn't It wasn't a Viking tour. <laughs> it wasn't a Viking tour. <laughs> it was, it was the, like someone who lived in, yeah, in, yeah. The, in the windmill. So, <laughs> disclaimer, it wasn't a guest. No one was injured while on our tour. <laughs> or hopefully previous tours. Uh, we got to go inside, which you kind of saw a little bit of inside. It was really dark, so it didn't really work out with the camera. Uh, but you got to, there used to be, or there still is, people that live um, in the windmill, and some of them have like five to six family yes, members. Yes, they have full families that live there because they actually pass the windmill down from generation to generation, and they're paid by the Netherlands government to keep it up and running because they actually did have a flooding a few years ago where they had to have all the windmills going, including the electric screws as well. Otherwise, a lot of Holland would have been underwater at that point. Yeah. Um, so, you know, as the U.S. learned uh, with, what well, what hurricane was that? I don't know. I don't the know. one that flooded Louisiana. Uh, uh, levees Katrina. don't always work that great. Yes. And don't build your cities below sea level. But they built the whole country. I mean, you know. Okay, rant over. Uh, so after that, we walked back and got on our bus, and we went to a local cheese-making store, shop, factory? Uh, well, it, uh, I wouldn't call it a factory, but it was a local cheesemaker. Uh, we've got three of their stuff. We did purchase some more, but we've already since ate that. Yeah, we ate it. And you've seen the video, or have they? No, not no, yet. Not yet. Okay, so we're going to stop talking. And so watch the video. video. Blah. Are we back now? I don't yeah, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're back now. 
So we did get to see a, a local cheesemaker. I can't pronounce the name. Do you know what it's it is? It's like Bouge. Yeah, I, I. It's definitely Dutch. Um, they're amazing. I'll put their website down um, below in the description, um, and even some of their uh, like their Instagram and Twitter handle. But we, uh, they were so great. They've been around for uh, about fifty years, I believe. Family owned. Family owned. Um, the person that you kind of saw speaking to us in the video, that is the daughter. Her parents started it, um, and so she's kind of taken over and does the tours. And she's kind of also uh, like diversified the cheese. Uh, originally, it was just traditional Gouda, which they still have, which is this one. I'm going to smoke that when it stops snowing. Uh, so we've got the traditional Gouda, and then she started making different flavors. So we got to try this one. Um, we got to try three different samples, but this is one of the ones we got to try. That's fenugreek. Fenugreek, which was super like crunchy and amazing. This was the... Um, Time one, the lemon. This one we didn't get to try, but you bought two of yeah, these. Yeah, I bought two of these. We've already ate one. It's um, did she call it Mediterranean? No, no, no. That was my favorite. No, one. that was her favorite. We've ate we that ate that one. already. This is like lemon and thyme. Yeah, that they have mixed in with <clears> the food, and it's really good. And then we got the Mediterranean one. You, there were people that bought like the little baby full ones or like the big ones. Yeah. Uh, but we decided to get the vacuum sealed ones. They're easier to go through customs. Yeah. Um, something small like that will get through customs. Something large like that you have to pronounce. Uh, well, you have to tell them about it and they have to inspect it. Makes it a little bit more difficult. Yeah. So we got to try three different types. The traditional one, the fenu, fenu Greek, fenu Greek, and also this goat cheese Gouda, which I thought was really great. The, I didn't much care for the goat cheese because it was far more brittle. It was more mm -hmm. dry. I, I, did, I did not care for it. Uh, I like the other ones, and we bought them. So yeah, and it was in a really adorable tasting room, which there should be some pictures here. Uh, so they allow people to come in and eat and drink and stuff like that. And they have a shop, and the shop was packed. I mean, there it was, was a, a very long small line. shop, but everyone enjoyed it. We all went in there and just waited patiently, and all bought our own cheese. And you so. can buy them online. They do mm -hmm. ship um, across the country, and they were getting all these Christmas packages. They also ship to the U.S. Yeah. Too. Mm -hmm. uh, in case you're a U.S. viewer and you're like, I want to try it. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. So uh, it was awesome. We paid about $50 extra to upgrade to the cheese making. A piece. A piece, yes. But it was, I, th I thought it was well worth it. It was cool. I've never seen cheese being made f before. And I really liked that it was, you know, this traditional Gouda uh, and this family owned business. So we really enjoyed that piece of it. Yeah. Uh, after that, we hopped back on the bus and we actually ended up driving through Holland, which was really nice. Mm -hmm. We thought we were going to go directly back to the boat, but they had already left our port and were on their way to Cologne, and we met them. Did we meet them in Cologne? I don't no. think so. We met them about halfway Somewhere through. Else. And then we you know, went and had lunch on the boat, and the lunches, it varies from day to day. I think like one day I tried their hot dog, which was really good, and I had ribs another day. I think this day you had the fish and chips only because they yes. took a picture of the menu, which I'll put up here. Um, and it was kind of <laughs> odd because it was like... Served on top of smashed peas. Is that like a normal thing? If is it's a normal the, thing, put it in the comment below. But it's not normal in the in, US. In, in, yeah, for us. So. At all. So, uh, yeah, we did lunch. I always ate the pasta option because it was Ugh, delicious. I don't like pasta, every so day. we don't eat it that often, but good for her. And then we went back to the room. We, like, just kind of hung out. We were still, like, kind of catching up from our jet lag. Mm -hmm. um, we did attend a cooking demonstration upstairs. It was this Dutch past apple pastry uh, that was obviously Dutch. Uh, so they taught us how to make it, and they gave us, like, a recipe. Yeah, one thing that is definitely different from the ocean to the rivers is the ocean has more amenities on there to do, like spas, theaters, while the river is just a lounge area, but they do try to entertain you while you're traveling between each port. So they did do this apple turnover, mm -hmm. which was nice to look at, but I don't like apple turnover, so I didn't even eat it. Yeah, they also had, um, we kept our Viking dailies. They also had like a nautical talk where you got to talk with the captain and kind of see everything. And they also did a toast. We missed all of that. We just went back to our room and relaxed. And then uh, we went to dinner and we still stayed with the same uh, group of friends that we met the first night. We actually stayed with them the entire trip. Um, and then we went back upstairs to the lounge and there was music trivia. Which we won. We won. Picture of us winning. Yep. Team something old, something new. Yes. what we were called. We won. And we won. We dominated. They, they weren't even close. Like, we really close. had like a billion points, and I forget how many it was, but um, they they still gave us to win, even though we I don't think they gave us the whole margin. Yeah. Because you got no. points per like 
people who danced also yeah, like if extra a member, points. Yeah, if members of your team got up and danced during the song that they asked the trivia question about, you were supposed to get points. So we really had like 30 something points. Yeah. And they only gave us like 20. And I'm yeah. like, But we still won. But we still won. And they gave us some champagne. House champagne. <laughs> it's some chocolate they bought at a convenience store right after this. Wasn't that great? <laughs> but <laughs> wasn't that great? And maybe our friends will comment below how bad it was. It was However, like... it was fun to win. And everyone the whole time was like, oh, you guys won in trivia. So, yes, we were. Uh, well, I, I'm very loud in competition. So it is quite obvious everyone realized who the winner was yeah so they did recognize us throughout the rest of the uh, cruise <laughs> yeah and then we popped that champagne another night all together Ooh. so anyway so that was our day so I personally loved this day I think I put in some posts earlier on either on my Facebook page or on my Instagram page that I was a little bit nervous about like just doing windmills to me I was like this seems like it could be a very slow day, but it really was this awesome cultural experience and one of my favorite days. Honestly, like looking yeah, back over the, whole, favorite day. over the whole time, yeah. that was like one of my favorite days. And so I would definitely suggest uh, upgrading to the cheese one yeah, um, and great. don't miss the windmills. And hopefully your weather is slightly better than ours because it's really windy. Uh, but if you're going in the spring, it should be really pretty. Uh, so, we, we went for the Christmas markets. Uh, that's... If you do the Rhine, do it for the Christmas. Yeah, market. it was it's awesome. Amazing. And we'll, well, we'll talk about at another later, video. Another Actually, video. our day three video when we go to Cologne, Germany, which we had a full day of stuff mm -hmm. and a full yeah, video of our things tour to guide talk about. has an uncle that was married three times. <laughs> okay. We will talk about it in our next video, um, which hopefully we'll post next week. We're going on vacation. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, like, all that jazz, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye bye.